The Rockefeller Foundation sees building resilience and building more equitable growth as the two main pillars of potential transformation with regard to 21st century challenges. We see a world that is ever more turbulent uh, with crisis becoming the new normal, whether it's a cyber attack or a violent storm or flooding or an economic failure somewhere around the world, weekly or monthly, there is a crisis. And the effort to help cities and countries become more resilient feels very pressing. Similarly, we have seen inequitable growth over the last 25 years in almost every part of the world at the macro level. And how you meld these two is a critical feature of our interest. There are many ways to become resilient, but making equity and inclusion a key piece of this is a way of achieving both goals simultaneously. I wrote the book, The Resilience Dividend, because I do fear that crisis is the new normal and that we are not well prepared using the old paradigm that we've been using, a paradigm that really focuses most resources on response and recovery after a disaster rather than on preparing and planning before a crisis hits. It is estimated that the aggregate expenditure of the world on disaster recovery is now somewhere close to $200 billion a year when all types of disasters are considered. And it is very clear to me that we can't keep lurching from crisis to crisis about one dollar of every three dollars spent on development is now lost to the next crisis. So a new model is absolutely needed. The resilience dividend focuses on the three elements that are critical, uh, readiness, response when a di disruption does hit, and revitalization, arguing that readiness, of course, is critical uh, we can't always prevent things from happening, so the way we respond when something does depends on our readiness and, and our planning, not for what the last crisis was, but for any crisis, and that's an important feature that the book tries to argue, and that in the elements of recovery, we must sow the seeds of revitalization, of increasing the capacity to adapt and grow. Often in recovery, we make the mistake of believing that we must build back the same, that things have to get back to normal. Well, normal is what made that element vulnerable in the first place. So using that moment of crisis, should it occur, as a way of revitalizing and adapting and growing is critical. The book, though, adds a fourth R, and that's return. The argument that in making investments during these three phases, there's a return for investing in resilience, a return in a variety of domains, in economic growth because of the creation of new jobs and services, a return in terms of infrastructure that works effectively, more effectively perhaps in the good times a return in the way urban spaces are recreated, thinking of a resilience framework, and certainly a return in building greater social resilience. So the return is not only in the capacity to rebound more effectively, but in normal operations and making them more effective in the good times as well.
we see many cities around the world innovating in ways that one would not have thought they could because often they don't have the financial resources that one would expect to allow them to invest. And so we've been very impressed, for example, in the investment in soft infrastructure, in restabilizing coastlines, in, in restoration of parklands, mangrove restoration in, in many parts of the world. These are soft infrastructure solutions that are relatively low cost and that really do rebuild capacity enormously. We've seen incredible technological solutions as well. So with the internet of things upon us, the ability to build sensing buildings uh, has been enormously impressive. And we see that in many of our highest density cities. We see the use of smart grid technology and smart switches that take one of the uh, characteristics of resilience, the ability to self-regulate an island uh, or de-network from something when it fails as a very important innovation. The use of big data analytics to really use data from any parts of the system, including social media, as a way of, of helping cities and helping regions to understand in real time what's going on and mobilize responses. So a variety of innovation from the most technical and technological to what we call soft solutions, including uh, soft solutions around building more trusting and, and cohesive communities that have been extremely impressive around the world.